So we mentioned that we're talking about a system, right? Here's a speaker, all right? Well, what is a speaker? So a speaker is really a motor system, right? It's a motor system, in this case, driven electrically. Interestingly, you don't have to make a speaker system electrically. You can make a system using flame to drive it, or even a mechanical system to produce sound. Remember that the first record player made by uh, Thomas Edison or Emil Berliner um, used a mechanical horn. So it was simply a piece of straw or reed that was going into grooves on the wax and the vibrating piece of this needle, as it was often caused, just went into a horn like a trumpet and that's how it worked. It was a purely mechanical system. But nowadays we make electrical systems and we use magnets and coils around the magnet to create an electric motor. One of the important things for people to learn about, if you want to understand this stuff, is the right-hand law of magnetism. And that is that wherever there's an electrical current, at right angles to it, there's a magnetic field generated. So when we send electricity through the coil, it generates a magnetic field. If we put a magnet that's within that magnetic field, what happens? Well, we know that north and south magnets attract each other, but north and north magnets push each other away. So as the alternating current from our AC systems in the United States works back and forth, the magnet and the coil structure is attached to the actual cone of the speaker. And as the magnetism reverses polarity, it goes in and out and in and out. And that's exactly how the speaker makes sound. But what about that speaker? Well, there's a lot of factors in it. What's the material made of? Is it a cone? Is it a dome? Is it made of paper? Is it made of carbon fiber? Is it made of Kevlar? Is it made of plastic? Hey, you suddenly realize you've read all about those claims. You've heard about neodymium magnets. What are those? Are they better or worse? The truth of it is, is it all just depends. It's up to the designer of the loudspeaker system. And the materials we use, the physical weight of the speaker driver, will determine how easy or hard it is to push it in or out. And how well and how rigid is it will determine how well it reproduces at different frequencies. Again, there's an awful lot to understand, but you don't have to cut through all of that. You just go ahead and listen to the thing with music or soundtrack that you really know and like, and your ears will do the talking for you, and we can try and help you here to understand the terms. So one of the things that a lot of times uh, companies point, point out is the power in their system. Now, like horsepower in a car, it's very much the same sort of thing. Power, which is expressed in watts, is telling you how much power this integrated powered system has to drive the speaker driver itself. Power is expressed in terms called watts, and they're named after Sir James Watt, an old English scientist, very famous, worked with steam and steam engines. Originally, Mr. Watt wanted to explore what work meant. That's literally what it is. So in the world of physics, work is expressed in the terms of energy consumed or generated. And we use a term called a joule. Not a joule like a diamond, but a joule, J-O-U-L-E. And a watt, in honor of Sir James Watt, was named as the unit of power that generated one joule of energy. However, we express it a little bit differently in electrical terms. We say that one watt of power is equal to one ampere of current times one voltage of electricity. Now, what do those terms mean? Voltage is the speed at which the electrons or the electricity is flowing, and amperage is sort of the current or the size and strength of that river of electrons. So you would think that more watts are better. Well, sometimes they are, but not necessarily. It's the equivalent of, would you put that big 400 horsepower Hemi engine to drive 
your little kid's Barbie Jeep? Probably not. It would be way too much, too heavy. It would probably strip the gears and the excess power would be wasted. You'd spend a lot of money driving the engine for very little utility. So we go back to the fact that these things are systems. The amount of power for them is determined by the characteristic of the speaker driver itself and how loud we want to get it. So there is no one right answer for how much power there is. What we're trying to do is to get the character of the music to be really wonderful, even nice frequency response as we talked about before, and enough power to generate enough sound or sound pressure level to satisfy you in the listening environment you want. We'll take a look at that next.